All right, so I got a service call to run this morning, so I need to get the flatbed out, which means I got to move the dually and get the flatbed out and then pull the dually back forward. I love playing musical trucks. Man, that dually makes my flatbed look small. The difference between a two-wheel drive three-quarter ton and a four-wheel drive one ton. Looks like a toy back there. I need to get the 04 out of the garage, put all three of them next to each other and see how it, that looks. Pretty sure the 04 is still longer than this truck, but it's uh, lower because it's two-wheel drive. All right, so we're heading out on a service call here on that skid loader. Thought you guys would like a little bit of bus content on the way, though. There's a uh, prison on this road, so. Continue on South nice County transport bus there. For three miles. Anyway, this skid steer, uh, it's a no start, it's just clicking. But this thing has a history of eating starters. Uh, we put one on it a year ago, six months ago, that one we put on there had launched the guts out of the solenoid and broken ear off of it. So we cobbled together that one with a, another starter that actually came off it, we slides it at the shop. Got that all together and had it back up and going and now it's doing it again. And uh, I mean, before we started working on this, I think the owner said he put like six starters on it in a few years. So we're gonna see if we can't figure out why this thing wants to eat starters constantly. Hopefully we'll find something out on that, but no matter what, we gotta figure out what's wrong with it verify that it is the starter and then we'll get one on its way so they can get back to using their skid steer all right so we started out here made sure that our master switch is on and then we have battery voltage which we do so next thing i did is i rigged up my fluke here just grabbing a ground off the of zerk fitting it's good enough ground and i'm grabbing the power going into the starter so the nice thing is with the 233 fluke here i can leave my meter set up it's hard to do one-handed I can take the display with me. So when you're out working by yourself, I don't have to run wires all the way around. All right, so I've got the remote display set up outside. I tried bringing it in here, but the cab was giving RF interference. So, key on, down to just 11 volts, crank it. down to like 3.8 volts all right well it looks like we're gonna have a battery issue so I've got the blower motor on all the lights are on it's a lot of power up without it running right now I'm watching to see what the voltage does here because if we have a bad starter it could draw the voltage down that far but that's not what it's looking like here we're down to 9.3, 9.2, 9.1, 9, 8. Yeah, looks like this thing's got a bad battery in it. So to go ahead and verify, I moved my meter uh, to the two jump points in the back of the unit. That's about the best place other than straight to the battery I can grab right now. So we're showing 12 volts again resting, now that I've let it sit. four and a half volts so it's got enough power to push it forward but not enough to spin the engine so yeah we're gonna have to get a battery for this one all right well new turn of events here just wanted to verify that the engine actually turns over and put my long three eights on the crank and it didn't budge so i'm gonna try to sneak my half inch in there and see if i can get it to move but normally i can take a three eights that long and get one of these engines to turn I mean, it ain't going to move far, it ain't going to move fast, but it moves, and there was nothing when I just pulled on that. It's it's stuck. So, let me crawl back up in here. It's kind of a pain. I'm literally up on top of the tracks right now, laying inside this access here. I'll see if I can get it to turn over with a half, but it might not be a starter. We might actually have a locked up motor on this. So, let me try with a big ratchet here, and we'll see what it does. see that all right so we've got the ratchet down there on the crankshaft and that's turning the bolt on the crank that's not moving the crank so this engine ain't gonna spin well that's gonna change this service call 
this probably isn't gonna be something I'm gonna be fixing out here in the field this is gonna have to get brought back to the shop but it looks like this engine's locked up or possibly the pump or something afterwards we're gonna have to figure that out so before we go I figured I'd check a couple more things inside of the radiator it's pretty dry so that's not great but you know can't be the only thing we look at there because we don't know I mean it could be sitting right in here and once it gets running be plenty fine Let's see if the reservoir's got anything in it and that reservoir looks to be bone dry too so let's pull the dipstick and see what the oil looks like oils pretty low so if this is supposed to be a one quart and we're all the way down here we're low on oil the oil looks clean I don't feel anything in it uh, doesn't smell bad but I don't have the full story on this um, I actually don't know anything about what happened to it. I just got a call last night from Chris asking if I'd come out here and look at this because this is on my way to the shop. So I said, yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. It's just a no start that clicks. It's all I know so far. So I'll see if I can get more of the story from the customer about what happened to it. Because part of his concern was that it might be locked up. That well, seems like an interesting place to jump to on what's wrong with it. But oil's low, coolant's low. And that engine won't spin over. So that's going to be the end of what we're going to do out here. I'm not going to tear any farther into it. If they're going to want to figure out more of what's wrong with it, we're going to have to bring it into the shop. All right, we had to run down the street and go pick up a rock crawling side by side. It needs a little bit of TIG welding done on it. Uh, it blew the crankcase vent out of the valve cover. At least that's what we were told. I'll to see what they got set up on it once we get it over to the shop. Chris will get it all welded up. Off of the, or the valve cover off of this. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see they hear that big hole in the valve cover. That hose should be hooked to there. <laughs> I'm kind of interested and concerned at the same time to how the hell it broke that off in the first place. Although looking at this thing, name a reason. It looks like a, I mean, I kind of wish I had a bouncer like this. I'd have a lot of fun with it. Oh, if I had something like this, I'd be in trouble a lot. <laughs> but. Do you want to tackle trying to get the valve cover off of this? Yeah, I'll get it ripped apart. I'm going to change the oil on this one so I can get it done and out of here. Because I still got. He's got a four seater too that after I'm done with this one that he wants done. What do we have to do to it? I don't remember. Okay. Well, I'll get that plate off and start getting the valve cover off this one. Okay. Hey, what engine is this one? 900. Is it 900? Okay. All right, so I got this plate off the top. The uh, breather for the belts is off. So I've got the bar here loose that mounts the air box, but it's still not quite out of the way. But I can kind of hold it back with a screwdriver enough. There's enough give in the boot for this air box. That I should be able to sneak this thing out of there. So I went ahead and uh, took a blow gun and blew as much of the dirt out of here as I could because I don't want that to be getting down in the engine while I'm uh, working on it but we'll see about getting a socket and go ahead and pop this valve cover off then we can get it over to the workbench get this cleaned up and then use this hose right here it's got the broken piece on it but I'll have to get that in a second because I've got tools sitting on top of the oil reservoir right now and it's not supported because I have this bar off so we got the valve cover off and they have tried to JB weld it back together. I've got this one starting to get cleaned up. Chris is doing a final cleaning on it before we start welding on it. But it shouldn't be too bad. We'll get this thing taken back on there real quick and it should be good. I still don't know what broke it off and then, I mean, really the JB weld should have worked. I mean, there really shouldn't be any pressure on that. It's just a crankcase vent to the oil reservoir, but... No matter what, once we get it welded, it definitely ain't coming back out.
So I figured I'd show you guys up close in this balancer here. This thing started out life as a Razor 900. So most of the powertrain on this is still stock, but this is obviously a completely aftermarket chassis, the whole cage kit. Uh, all the suspension is aftermarket on it. But, I mean, it's definitely dirty. It's been used. But still uses most of the stock instrumentation and all that. We've got just complete aftermarket everything else, though. I want it. This would be a lot of fun to have down in Tennessee. All right, now it's time to head to the southeast side of the city. Um, oh, probably 40 minutes west is where our shop is, so... Get to head to the other side of the city real quick. I gotta go pick up parts from McAllister Cat from their their big shop. Unfortunately, they didn't have it at their rental shop, which is a lot closer. But um, we have a service call to do tonight. Hopefully tonight on a skid steer. Uh, one of our really good customers is a pool building contractor, and they want oil change, fuel filters, air filter, hydraulic filter done. Um, it gets air filter oil change and fuel filters every service and then at least once a year we do hydraulic filters on it. So it's time for that, but uh, they were in the middle of a pretty big concrete pour today and wanted to make sure that they had it in case they needed it for that. So I told them that they can uh, get a hold of me after they're done for the day and I can go to their shop and do it or I might have to go do it tomorrow on the job site, but I'm gonna try to do it tonight when they're done working for the day and don't need the, the piece of equipment anymore. I mean, it's great weather, we've got light, you know, pretty late in the day right now. If not, I've got lights on the service truck. But we try to accommodate our contractor customers and, you know, same with our farm contracts and stuff like that. We try to do it anything we can after their normal hours of operation. That way they're not down a piece of equipment. I mean, it's one thing if it breaks and we have to fix it, but if it's just regular planned maintenance like this, I'd rather do it at, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night when they're done for the day and don't need it. And that way they're not out the piece of equipment. So about an hour, hour and 20 minutes or so, and We'll be over there we'll pick up our parts and then uh, I'm probably gonna head home because my house is in the city and I'll just wait for the phone call for them that they're done for the day and go meet up with them and go get the skid steer serviced all right made it to McAllister cat now I just got to try to remember where this parts department is here this is a huge complex I don't know that there's a piece of equipment that Cat currently makes or sells that isn't sitting out here on this lot. And they've got a couple more lots around Indianapolis that are just packed. So let's see if we can find a parts department. I have to say I am really pleased with the service here at McAllister Cat today. Lately, Getting parts has been a little bit difficult. A lot of parts stores have been making life a lot harder. Uh, delivery's been slow. Even if you go to pick stuff up, it's been terrible. I had the customer call this order in this morning and uh, I got here. Everything was boxed up, ready to go with a tag on it, sitting on a cart that everyone's orders lined up. You walked in, you told them who it's for. They slid a piece of paper over. I signed it real quick, then I picked it up and out the door. I, I wasn't even in there two minutes. I mean, it's a struggle to get parts that quick on a good day. I loved those tracked dump trucks. They had one of those out on a job that I was out on a few weeks ago. 